You guys know that I get a lot of kitchen tools and gadgets in my hot little hands to play with in the kitchen. And all of it is absolutely fun to me and fantastic. But occasionally a few things come along the way that makes me so excited that I just want to get in the kitchen and renew my pledge to learning to cook. And we have one of those things in the kitchen today. We have a brand new knife from the people at Dragon. Now, I know you're gonna say, a knife? What's so exciting about that? Number one, I love cutlery. But number two, there's so many special features about this knife that I am just out of my mind that I have one here in the kitchen today. We are going to be testing the Dragon Chef Fusion. And I'm gonna tell you a few things about this knife and um, I'm really excited about trying it out. So join me as we take a look at, and we're gonna do a cut test on the Dragon Fusion Chef's Knife. You may wonder why cooks get so geeky about their knives. And I can tell you that I have a perfect example of why that is the case, why it is very important to pay attention to the quality of your knives and keep them very, very sharp. Last weekend, I was at this very spot right here and I was dicing an onion. And I went down here where I have some of my knives, I grabbed a knife out of here and I started dicing. The problem is, the knife that I had wasn't sharp. And when I was dicing, what happens when you're dicing and the knife isn't sharp, you tend to apply more pressure and it doesn't cut. So then it has a tendency to slip. And that is exactly what happened to me. I was dicing, I was pushing, and it slipped. And what was worse is I wasn't using the classic grip on it like this to avoid the knife um, coming down on my fingers, I had my hand out like this. So I had a combination of everything horrible you can think of in terms of uh, cutting for a rookie, right? I had a dull knife and I had my fingers positioned in the wrong place. It was because I was going fast, I was trying to get it done and I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So look what happened to me. I have two cuts, right? I was cutting like this, wham, right across two fingers like this. I cut my nail and I cut my thumb just like this. This is a rookie mistake and this is what I don't want you to do. So how do you avoid this thing? Number one, you pay attention. What I was not doing. <laughs> Number two, you need a very sharp knife, which I didn't have. And number three, you need to keep your fingers out of the way, which I didn't do. So I had like a three pack of terrible, right? And I got it. So I am running around with these band-aids on my hand and that's why that is, but you know, I learned from my lesson. So one of the reasons I'm so excited about this knife is for this reason. We had talked in the past about the difference between a chef's knife and a Santoku knife. The difference between a Western style knife and a Japanese style knife. And one of the things we discussed is the Rockwell rating. So the Santoku or the Japanese style knives tend to have a harder steel than Western knives. And that harder steel can get a lot sharper than Western knives. Western knives tend to be down in the lower 50s on the Rockwell scale, and the Japanese knives tend to be in the upper 50s and low 60s on the Rockwell scale. You usually see them like 58. You can even see them up to 62. So what the people at Dragon did is they took an American steel and they sent it over to Yaxel in Japan and they had them make their knives. So Dragon took the best 
of what we make in America, right in Pennsylvania. And they went to the best knife maker in the world and they made this knife. And what's great about this knife is it is robust like a chef's knife. It has strong American steel, but what it has also is it is heat treated to 63 on the Rockwell scale. That is even higher than a lot of Santokus that we see that are heat treated to 58, 60, 61, 62. This knife is heat treated to a 63. Now I know all you knife people are gonna say, the higher you heat treat, the higher on the Rockwell scale, you risk a knife that's gonna chip, it's gonna break. You heat that steel to even a higher Rockwell rating, it could shatter like glass if it's too, too hard. This knife is made where it's thicker, it's robuster, and it is hard as steel, right? So it can get razor sharp. So this knife is, what I'm so excited about, is it's a combination of the great qualities of a chef's knife and the great qualities of Santoku all in one knife that is a very unique shape. And I actually haven't seen this knife. I've only seen the picture. I haven't taken it out of the box yet. But even my heart is pounding, right? Because I want to see this knife. I'm very excited about it. Um, and so let's get this baby open. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank Dragon for sending me this knife. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to doing a cut test on this baby and using it in my kitchen. So here is our knife. And this is the Dragon Knife. It is manufactured by Yaxel in Japan. Um, here is their website. Let's get this baby open. We need a drum roll for this knife. Oh, look at this. So you're gonna get an infant, wow, look at that. Look at that knife. That knife is sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's take a look at the information really quick because, you know, I geek like that. But look at, look at this knife. Sorry about that. That happens, right, sometimes. So the blades on the dragon knife is made from tough Pennsylvania steel and is crafted by Yaxel in Siki City, Japan. The blades of the dragon are extremely robust, one-piece construction made from three millimeter thick nitrogen-enriched American steel. And it is a BD-1N steel. It's made by Carpenter Technologies in Pennsylvania. Um, the steel is hardened to 63 on the Rockwell scale for extreme sharpness and edge retention. They are assembled and finished in Siki City, Japan by some of the highest skilled craftsmen known in the world by Yaxel. Um, pretty much Yaxel has been around since the 30s. So, oh my gosh, look at that bad boy. <laughs> Number one, look at the shape of this thing. It is um, a rocker, right? It does not have a bolster, and which is really unique from a Santoku because Santokos tend to be really flat. It is just funky. And I mean funky in a good way, right? It has a micarta handle, which is made out of a linen that is, um, doesn't take up any water. So that's what's great about the handle. It is so smooth. It is the rivets. You just run your finger on there and there's no, um, you know, height difference. It is nice and smooth between the rivets and the uh, material. Um, so this side, it is, Yaxel. It's an eight and a half inch fusion chef's knife. 
it is made from BD1 and steel made into Japan. So this is American steel in this knife, which is unique because a lot of people aren't using American steel in knives. They're using, it's a super steel. It is stainless steel. It has all the things in it that will keep it from corroding and rusting like you know, unlike a flat out carbon steel blade, this has all those properties that will keep it nice. Um, but look at that bad boy. I mean, look at just the robustness of it. Look how thick the spine is. That gives you power when you're going to, um, gonna cook, you know, cut some big vegetables or meat. I just, I just think it's funky. The, um, there's no bolster, so you're able to sharpen all the way back to the blade. The blade has, it looks like it has about a 50-50 bevel on it. It is um, grind on both sides of the blade as opposed to only one side of the blade. Um, wow, this is fantastic. Um, I would say that we're going to give this a... a uh, test we're gonna do a cut test but I say just by the look and the feel of this I think I have a new favorite knife this this thing is bad right it is bad in a good way so I'm gonna wash this baby up we're gonna get some stuff out so we can chop it up we're gonna see what the dragon can do and um, can't wait so it's time for a cut test This knife, this knife is sweet. Okay, so let's try out, let's go to the next one. I got a zucchini here. I mean, this is laughable, right? This is laughable because this knife just, It's so smooth. Sometimes when you cut into thing, you literally, when you have a sh dull knife and you cut, you literally can feel the grain of stuff when it's not sharp. This knife is so just butter. It's incredible. Um, nice. Love it. Okay, we're going to something harder here, a carrot. nice and you can rock so you can push cut with this or rock so this is what I typically do I basically you can put your um, tip of the knife down nice okay so next I have some parsley and this is obviously not difficult to cut parsley. It's just, what's great about this knife is whatever kind of cutting style you have, this knife will get the job done. Whether you like to do this, whether you do a push cut, or whether you just rock, like I do. And um, we can do a little rocking on this. Wait. No work at all. It's nice and sharp. Sweet. 
So now we're going to bring out the big guns, right? We have a honeydew. So let's see how this does on a honeydew. This is just gliding through. I'm so used to fighting my knife when I'm cutting a honeydew. Um, wow. <laughs> it's just gliding. I don't really even have to use too much effort to cut that. Wow. I don't know if you've ever cut in a honeydew before, but usually sometimes it can be a little rough cutting this sucker. Okay, so we're just gonna cut little wedges because we can serve these up as for breakfast. Just cut them, wow. I mean, that just, that is so nice. Have you ever cut a uh, honeydew like butter? That's what this knife is doing. It's not honeydew, it's butterdew. <laughs> it's beautiful. So we got that one into wedges. Wow. This one I'm actually gonna peel. It's really, really nice. Really, really nice. Ooh, look at that. I'm just going to, whoops, missed a little piece right there. And this I'm just going to, look at that. Wow. Now that's fun. Peeled that bad boy. Whoops. <laughs> now we're going to cut this into chunks. Wow, that's nice. You know, I like a knife when you, while I'm cutting, I just say, wow. <laughs> it's, the knife is robust enough to go through this. This is a 63 on the Rockwell scale. It's a really sharp knife and this knife is hefty enough to go through something like this this big old melon i'm just gonna take this kernels off of these corn i'm gonna use this for a fresh corn salad this is really really easy with this knife wow Woo! it's best to do this in a uh, bunt pan then you won't have corn flying all over the place. Wow. Nice. I'm going to make a, a fresh corn salad. The dragon knife did an awesome job. So we're going to kind of see how robust this knife is. We're going to cut some beef. And this is a sirloin tip roast. I'm just going to cut it thin. Eric's going to use it and make a little cheese steak with it. Um, I'm not used to cutting beef because I don't eat a lot of beef. Eric does, but I don't. So we'll see how this goes. I kind of see that there's a grain going this way. I can't really tell. This grain is sort of going all over the place. I figure that because this is a roast, it's got a bunch of different kind of cuts on it. Um, so we're just going to cut it this way and I'm going to cut it thin. And we slightly have it partially frozen so it will um, easy, be easier to cut. It won't be jiggling all over the place. So, and we can cut it really thin. So here's a dragon knife. Here's our beef. And it's frozen. So it's a little tougher to go through, but I can cut it really thin with this knife. Look at that. Look how thin that piece of beef is. Wow. 
That's going to be a really, really nice cheesesteak, huh, Eric? Any more than that? You can have... Wow. Look at that. That's a beautiful piece right there. So is that enough for you, Eric, for your cheesesteak? Like an appetizer. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I like this knife. It's cutting it really good. And this, this thing is partially frozen. So if I just want to go straight through this thing and do some of it for cheesesteaks and I can cook the rest of this off as a little roast, I would say I did a fabulous job. So my opinion of the dragon, I give it my two thumbs way up. It's a great knife. It is very, very sharp. Um, you get the benefits of both schools of thought on a knife. You get the chef's robustness and you get the sharpness of a Santoku. And um, with the 63 Rockwell weighting, this knife is fantastic. So in terms of the shape of the knife, it's a really funky knife. I really, really like it. It's unique. It takes a little bit of getting used to if you're used to a knife that has a bolster on it and just how to use your cutting style with it. But what's great about it is you can rock with it, you can push cut with it, you can do everything with this knife. Um, that's what's great about it. It's really, really versatile knife and I really like the shape. It has a comfortable handle, um, it's really well made and that's why this knife gets the Amy Learns to Cook thumbs way up. Once again, I want to thank Dragon for sending me this knife. Really looking forward to using it in the future. Um, you will see it on my show uh, pretty frequently because it's one of my favorite knives now. So thank you Dragon for sending me this knife. I really appreciate it. If you want to take a look at it, the links will be down in the description. Um, to the page where you can get all the details about this knife. If you like this video, please subscribe below and leave me a comment and a like. Visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest at Amy Learns to Cook, and I'm also on Instagram at Cooking with Amy.